Okay, I showed him Google site next. Alas. I mean, 12 o'clock, right? Almost. Okay. Okay, just, I think, mind you can close early. Okay, close, log out, all this. I think log out early. Yeah. So I go to the next one, which is the Google site. Yeah, sites, sites. Sites. Okay. So, that's about the attribution. Another, con another component which you can use in your Google Doc is Google Sites. How many of you generate, uh, create website? Have your own website? Do you have your own websites? You don't use website for teaching. You don't have your own website. So in UMS, there is another, si another uh, with the enterprise of Google, you have the site creator, site generator. So this is called Google Site. Okay. So if you have been using Google Site, right, you can select the Sites icon, Google Sites. The blue icon on your page. The Google Sites icon. Okay. Click on Sites. Okay, and then this one, you have the uh, old site, the classic, and you have the new Google Sites. So, ours is actually using the new Google Sites. UMS allows. This are the old classic site. Okay, now, everything which I teach in UMS is actually on a Google Site. So the Google site is very interesting because you can access the information on the site in terms of analytics. Okay, so because JTMK also allows us to have analytics account. You know Google Analytics, you all use? Any of you all use Google Analytics? Analytics for tracking, site tracking. So basically how does the company know how many visitors come to your site and how, how, many, how long they spend and how many pages is by using Google Analytics. So, we can insert Google Analytics in our site through our UMS mail. So now this becomes a very useful tool for tracking your students. When are they accessing your website? How long are they staying inside? Which uh, parts are they accessing more? You know all that. So you can modify your website based on the analytics. Okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, no, offline as well. So suppose you create creative common, suppose you make photocopies uh, of the note, uh, then you should carry the license. So uh, do we need to insert the creative common label to each of our notes? Yeah, okay, so when you, that's why when you make PowerPoint, better to save it as one set PDF. <coughs> so when you, for example, it's recommended for PowerPoint, don't save as PowerPoint because they can, Pacha, break the material and use one, one, one line, right? Don't use that. You use one PDF file with a CC BY license for the whole. Then we want to insert, embed the CC label to our PDF. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can, yeah. So you just, in that case, what you do, I have done the same thing for my article. You put the article there and then you save as PDF. Lecture note as well. Because if the CC BY license is on the first slide, it means the whole slide set. So you can't, if you made PowerPoint right, technically you have to add to each and every slide, CCBY, cannot. So what you do is save it as PDF and the whole slide set will be CCBY. So that not deliver, CC. CCBY, BY, which means that they can reuse, remix. Yes. But if you don't want them to remix, you can make it share alike. Suppose, it's actually for news article. Suppose you're using a news article in which the politician said something and then in the middle he said something else and then suddenly you publish only the one which he said the bad part and the remaining part which is negative, we didn't show, right? The positive, we didn't show, you only showed one. So it's out of context. So you, you said something but context disappeared. So in that case, you will share alike. We can do that for our published article. Cannot, cannot, because published article belong to the... Uh, so you have to be careful with uh, the license. So, published article is already the copyrighted by the publisher. Own creation. It's only for own creation. It's actually to encourage creativity amongst all of us. That's the United Nations. UNESCO wants to make everyone more creative. So, they create that licensing and they do it with a consortium. With the so, this is actually Google Sites. Almost everything you can basically construct using site. So, to create a new site, you just click on site, new. So they can click on the site, new. And then you can create a new site using, just click on new site. Okay, you add site. Site, you create, and then you add, where's the button? Ah, there. 
Okay, here, 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 it's gone here. Yeah, you click here. Okay. And you can create a new site here. Have you all used any site creation tool for any before? Like, uh, you have used any site creation tool? You have website, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But usually there are many site creation tools online. You have the uh, even WordPress. You can make website. But site is very good because it creates one place for all your student to come and interact. For example, you have a course. You can create one site with a lot of information in one location for all your student. So a site can be a CV also as well with all the course content. Okay. So for example, you create just give it a name. Uh, just give it a name for training training site. Okay. Okay, just create a training site, just create training site. Training day or something like that. Okay, just create training. Okay. Now you can insert into that the image. Click here image. Select image. Select. Okay. Click any image. Okay. And select. So now your website gets built up using the Google tool. Now the good thing about working with Google Enterprise is earlier you have to go to the website, find an image, download it, upload it. With Google Enterprise, it doesn't work that way. You can insert images directly in your PowerPoint. Do you use Google PowerPoint, Google presentation? So you don't have to, do you ever copy and paste anymore? No more, you don't have to copy and paste, download. Everything is directly in the site. So this is, for example, he created the website. Now you want to create a layout, so just insert, insert one. Insert a layout, you just create one layout. Okay, just create layout. Okay. So you can add to this video, click video, YouTube. Just create, a, just look for something, uploaded something, video. Just look for some, OER, some video, just randomly. You click on this. Click. Just click. Okay, insert. Okay. So you can insert the video directly in the site. Suppose this is your lecture note, and then just write Ganyas lecture one. So you can actually have your whole 14 weeks of instruction in one website. So the advantage of this website, right, is using the Angular and Mirage format. So it will run in the mobile device in a format. If you see our UMS web page, when you open it on the desktop, it's okay. But when you open it on the on a handphone. The font is all, uh, because it's not using the latest format, which is Angular or Mirage, I think, Mirage, Mirage 2.0. This one will deliver it directly to your handphone. So you can, your student can access the web page as such in a video format. Okay, so I'll show you how. So click here. Okay, you can click here. And you can make it mobile friendly. So on mobile, it'll look like this. Okay, so your student will see it on their mobile phone in mobile friendly format. Automatic conversion, no need to reconvert the HTML code. And this will directly allow you to put uh, the student in the format, in the, the mobile format, mobile friendly format. Okay, so that's the way you make website. Okay, Zul, you can also show them how to insert form. <coughs> Just click on the edit. Okay, add another, add another layout like, and insert the form. Insert right, select from drive. And then form, just select some form. Any form you select, form. Form is there. You can attach some form, no form. Just click forms, just, just search inside the drive for form. The whole picture, 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 you can, I, I think hard to find form. Uh, Click here, share drive. Ah, so click. Okay. So if you want to create a lesson plan in your Google site, you can create. The top one can be a lecture. The bottom one can be a questionnaire for a student. You can track your student. So you know your student, whether they watch the lecture by seeing the YouTube traffic, how many viewers. You can track their response here. So you can create a whole lesson plan inside your website. Okay. So there are some of the lectures which I have are 14 lectures only using Google site. 
so it can be accessed in the campus, off campus as well, just using the Google site logo, uh, sorry, the Google site URL. Okay, so that's how we create the website. Okay. okay, now website, once you finish everything, you actually create here, publish, and then your website, your URL comes out, and then you can publish. Okay, so the website is published online, view published, right? Okay, so this will go up into the website. Now with this one, you can restrict the users only to UMS or you can make it global. You have the lim limitation, you can, because sometimes you don't want your uh, students who are outside your UMS to access your lecture note, you can do that as well with Google site. So Google site is a tool which you can use very uh, innovatively in UMS. And usually by, because of protocol, security and other issues, don't allow student to uh, share using their personal Gmail. Because we have problem when student use personal Gmail. Always ask them to use with a student at so and so at ums.edu.my. That's the registered email. Otherwise we can end up in trouble with uh, confidentiality and other issues. So use the student ID itself, okay? That's a cautionary note with Google Sites, okay? So you share, okay? So that's we close now. <laughs>
Well, are done with the quiz? Done? Done with the quiz, right? So, so I will just recap the content of the quiz. So basically, the content of today's lesson. So basically, copyright curation. This is overall UMS survey. Okay, so some there may be some skew skew in the data, but overall, it is the process of searching for content and reusing it with, with attribution. So copyright curation refers to the process of searching for content online and reusing it with appropriate attribution. That is curation for educators. Go down. Next one. Okay, so copyrighted material refers to the exclusive and assignable legal right given to the originator for a fixed number of years to publish, perform, film or record literally arts. So that is the related to copyrights. Okay, go down. The next one. Okay, so creative commons permits creators to create their own licenses. Then the next one. Okay, so content creativity of the stuff, as you know, is not automatically copyrighted. It is to be copyrighted by the respective lecturers. So this is the, uh, go down. So copyright infringement, of course, everyone is aware. It links back to us as lecturers. Go down. And then, YouTube account, basically, when you create your own uh, YouTube content, you are the one who give the attribution license, not UMS. So you have to select, you have the right to choose your license because you are the creator of that content. Okay, so go down one more thing. Okay, so that brings us to the conclusion of the first part of today's module. Okay, so uh, Prof Fong has asked you all to show the down part, the last part. <coughs> Okay, so, so if you go down, almost done. Okay, this is what Prof. Fong has asked you all to do. Uh, you can use your knowledge of screen casting or your knowledge of what we call uh, OER. You have to create uh, four content. It can be any content. It can be a video content. It can be a single page content. And it, if it's a, a video, usually five minutes or less. So usually what I do for this assignment, I will start my skin, screen recorder, divide a lecture into five parts or four parts of five minutes each and upload YouTube. And then you can deposit at repository. Alternatively, if you don't do video, you can just create a lecture note and deposit at the repository. The whole idea of this is to train you how to upload content to repositories. Okay, so that's what he needs. So once you complete this assignment, you can just upload onto this link. We have given you a link here. You'll click, click the link. Okay, so this is the link for your YouTube video or your content. Okay, so you can receive this link. You can store it in your database. So now all the content which you create from this particular module from this course will be uploaded into OER and you will have attribution for that. So that's why we do it for half a day. Usually we do six, CPD point is a full day, right? But Pendaftar has made this arrangement whereby you do half a day for one module and then the remaining you are given three hours to do the content at your own time, at your own pace and then you upload it. So when the Pendaftar check, they will check both whether the content is there and the thing. So that one is Adrian, Mr. Adrian will check that in the Pendaftar office whether both have been done. Then he assigned the CPD point. 31st August, you have one whole month. You can do it in five minutes actually. You can just put five minute video, you can do it in 10 minutes, create the content. Or if you have existing lecture note, just attributify, upload to OER. You have lecture note, also can, you just attribute. Okay, so that's the first part of the today's module. Now, in the afternoon module, I will be teaching you how to create content using a tool known as H5P. Okay, so I will, that's, a, that's going to take some time. So if possible, you can come here by 2 o'clock, uh, 2 o'clock, because for H5P I require time, because there are many types of things you can do with H5P, like just quizzes, videos. So I need you to be here at uh, 2 o'clock, okay? If you all have any question, you can ask me or Zul or Nora at any given time, at any time. So who wanted the licenses for screencast? 3, 3, 4. So you will have to email. Uh, Zul, you'll have to email Zulfadli. But uh, remember the license, right? When we give it to you all, Profong has some KPI for the license. It's basically creation of five. How many content, Zul? Five content. He wants you to create five content. In the first semester. Five content can be your, just your video note, lecture note, your lecture like I show you. 
it can be that. So, 5 content, that's the KPI for that. Because that KPI is adding to the KPI of the TNC, it's the of. Oh. training site from this particular link. So you can access it, you can either use the QR code or the website link, web link, www, so you can access it, it's free to download, reuse, remix as usual because we believe in the principle of open access. So you can access, that's the main training page. <coughs> so uh, those of your friend, if your friends are not around, you can just send them the QR, uh, the link, just WhatsApp, they will get it and they can access.